fake TV shows within TV shows is nothing new. However, I must say, the idea of the main character being the director is also not so new. See Stargate. Welcome to the heart of the stories we tell. My name is Rob, and tonight I will be reviewing Legends of Tomorrow. The episode name is Raiders of the Lost Ark. And you know what? I think using Stargate as my example was pretty good, because they're making a TV show, well, a little documentary movie called Legends. And you know what? It is hysterical. Although I do find it funny that the title, Raiders of the Lost Ark, is pretty much just because that's what inspired Commander St or Citizen Steel to become an archaeologist and historian to begin with. I will say that their take on the Spear of Destiny is going to be interesting, because it has a very huge impact on the comics. It's probably one of the most powerful artifacts short of the Helmet of Fate. It's complicated, but they used it as an excuse for why the JSA had to disband. I'm sure it'll have a much different use, if not the same power set in this. I'm also sure that it's going to not play much of a big role after this, most likely. It's just going to be the MacGuffin for getting together the Legion of Doom. I love that name. So let's get into this, shall we? So once again, it's stop. Spoiler time. Bah, da, na, na. Okay, I joke around a lot about the way they do time travel and the way they change history, but I have to say, one of the best things they've done on this show is George Lucas. It is a great example of something small that changes that could have huge, everlasting effects onto the time stream. Think about how many people were influenced by those movies. Think about how much pop culture was influenced by those movies. Think about how much you were influenced by those movies. And then realize that these two characters were both influenced. I'm sure there were a lot of historians because of Indiana Jones, and I'm sure there are a lot of scientists because of Star Wars and Star Trek. And before you say, well, Star Trek would still happen, keep in mind, Star Trek was a failure. Three seasons and done. Those movies were because of the success of Star Wars. So, yeah, sci-fi and fantasy wouldn't be what it is today. Maybe it would, maybe fantasy would be able to hold out. But let's be honest, a lot of this is, goes right back to exactly what Sarah said. One geek drops out of film school, and now my historian and my scientists are good for nothing? Yep, that's about how time travel works. That's why time travel's so scary. Of course, with this, we have the fact that Citizen Steel and the Atom save the day in the end, because of course they do. But that's not all we have. See, the side plot involves the fact that Martin Stein is playing psychologist for Heatwave, Kronos. And we find out that he has uh, something inside his head that's monitoring and recording and transmitting, and maybe he's seeing the real Captain Cold returned. I don't know which. Now, during the main thing, we have a big fight, and I'm betting you're all wondering who I think got firestormed this episode. And you know what? I have to give this episode props. They didn't. The closest they come is taking away Vixen's amulet, and that's not really a case of writing the character dumb or even messing up. That's just really using the, a weakness embedded in the fact that she has an item as her power source. All in all, tonight's episode was pretty close to flawless when it comes to the, the writing. Of course, nothing is completely perfect. There's lots of little nits I could pick here and there. But you know what? All things considered, between this and The Flash, I was very impressed with CW tonight. The storylines aren't exactly comic book inspired, but they're not exactly not comic book. I'd love to hear what you guys have been thinking about this. I think that The Legends of Tomorrow having a new launch going towards this with the Spear of Destiny and Hunting for Rip is going to be a great take and a great way to take the second half of Season 2. I will say, though, the idea of these guys working together is pretty terrifying. In fact, it might be the single most terrifying supervillains I've seen working together on a TV show as opposed to a movie. Between Damien Dark and Reverse Flash, they have the power covered. And I mean totally covered. But Malcolm Merlin is just sadistic. If you've watched any of Arrow, you know that he's done some pretty evil things already. But together... Like, torturing Rip at the end? That just almost turned my stomach. The idea. And now the heroes have to save him. And the question becomes, can they? I mean, really, they're not time hunters. They're not anything. If anything, I almost wish that we had more of Kronos left within R Mick Rory 
because I almost think that would be what they need right now. So right now it looks like Sarah has her work cut out for her. However, I have one last question for the group of you. For the dark ending, we had a nice lighthearted joke. Which George Lucas movie would you watch first, if someone's never seen any of them? Personally, I have to say, I wouldn't mind Howard the Duck but I probably would go with Star Wars over Indiana Jones. I will also say that this episode brings an interesting twist to my test of trying to look into the heart of the stories we tell, because tonight's episode dealt with the heart of the stories we tell, the fact that George Lucas made such a difference. It shows just exactly why it's so important that I'm doing this and that other people on YouTube are doing this, because as we walk through the heart of the stories we tell, we're looking at all the little things, the reasons why we tell these stories. So I hope you like, subscribe, and share this video, and then come back here next time to help me take a look at all of the stories we tell.